This is Steve from the NSAF, and we're here with one of our special guests that Nike has brought with us today, Courtney Frerich, who amazed and delighted us all with a silver medal finish at the London World Championships in the steeplechase, number uh, seven all-time and number two all-time American. And Cor Courtney, I, I bet just a few years ago, you were the type of person who might have been lining up for autographs with somebody you admired. Now you're the one that people are lining up for. How surreal has it been the last few months to get the kind of attention you've been getting from all your fans? It's been it's been absolutely surreal. That's the exact word that I use. It's just been an absolute dream come true, especially being next to Emma. Emma's the one I was looking up to several years ago when I started steeplechasing, and she's just been a phenomenal role model and has really kind of paved the way, especially last year in Rio, to show us you know meddling is possible. And so that's where I kind of shifted my goals to try and be in the medal conversation and. Um, it's really exciting to see that come true and to be alongside someone so special. It, it sounds like you really see her almost like a teammate as opposed to like a rival. It, exactly. You know, especially when we're out there and we have USA on our chest, um, we're running for our country and we're running to, to make our country proud. And um, when we were out there, I felt like we were working together as a team. We weren't two individuals. And I think that's why we were able to accomplish what we did. And I think that it's... The U.S. is on the rise as far as distance running goes, and um, you know, as the women, we had five medals in distance, which is absolutely amazing. And I think it's because of this shift in the sort of team dynamic. You know, I have an amazing team I get to train with every day, and then I go out there and race. And there's that team dynamic on the course, which is or on the track, which is really fun. Which training group is it that you're running with? Uh, Bowerman Team. Bowerman Track right? Club. Yep. Okay. And I love it. It's amazing. I think it's the closest thing to a college team in the professional world, which I think is why we're seeing so much. Success. Um, there's kind of that collective momentum. Everyone's going to have a good day, and it allows you to step up and have a good day, also. Well, you know, speaking of team, college, you know, college teams. You know, you have an amazing story as someone who proves that you don't have to be a national champion or even a state champion in high school to excel at the national level and, and develop it, you know, in your late teens and 20s and, and get to this level. Tell us a little bit about how you were introduced to the sport and how it ended up that your high school career was somewhat li limited and how you were able to embrace the sport and become the runner you've become now. Yeah, definitely. So I did track growing up off and on, but mostly field events in the 800. And so I hadn't really um, kind of tested the waters with distance running until my senior year of high school. All through, all growing up, I what high did, school was this? Um, Nixa High School in okay. Missouri. Um, growing up, I was a gymnast and I played soccer and my parents really emphasized being well-rounded, trying lots of different things. I basically tried every sport growing up and then um, kind of realized gymnastics probably wasn't my future, so decided to try the cross-country team my senior year. Fell in love with the team aspect that cross-country brings. Um, and it just introduced a new side of running that I didn't realize existed. And I didn't have the best state meet. I actually collapsed um, at the three-mile mark, and it just left. I felt like I had some unfinished business, so I went away to and college. And did you run track the next spring, too? I did while playing soccer in high school. Oh, okay. And did not make the state meet. And um, So you go to University of Missouri, Kansas City. Yep. Did you have a sense that there might be a lot of you know, untapped potential there, or was it really a coach or somebody you had to bring that out and you were really? It was definitely my coach. He sat me down and he was like, he told me, um, I made the World Junior team um, in my freshman year. year. Yeah. He sat me down and he, he told me. that much as a freshman. Yeah, okay. he told me that I'd earned the right to have an Olympic dream. He was like, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm not going to say, you know, yes, you're going to be on that team, but you have the right to dream about that happening. And that really lit a fire for me because it really resonated about my child with my child the dreams of winning the Olympics in gymnastics and so that definitely was my sh my focus shifted a bit into this isn't something that I'm that I'm you know okay at this is something I can be really good at and um, you know I just I owe so much to my coach. Well, and tell us about transferring to University of New Mexico. Yeah so um, after my fourth year at UMKC um, I got to a point that I was ready for a change and I really wanted that strong team experience. You had one year of eligibility. One year of eligibility. Okay. My coach actually took a job at the University of New Mexico. Oh, okay. So I was able to transfer along with him and then join a really strong team. And I tell you what, that was my favorite season of college. Just yeah. to go out and step on a course and know that I was racing for something greater than myself was just the best feeling. And I knew every day that um, I was doing it for those girls and we worked so hard. And, um, I think that really elevated me to the next level and shifted my focus in what I wanted as far as a professional group, um, in, in a professional group, and that's how I settled on Bowerman. How did you fall in love with the steeplechase? Is it kind of that natural athleticism you have? Kind of yeah, kind of that? my coach 
right, like a month into my freshman year, was like, you're gonna be a steeplechaser. Oh, really? wow. We were still in the cross country season. He was just, he liked the lower leg strength and the flexibility that I had from gymnastics. And so we, we tried it right away. And from the very first second that I tried the event, I knew it was the right one for me. Okay. Um, it just, yeah, it provided enough um, change and, um, and things on the track that I had lacked before. It was like cross country in the track and I loved it. And I felt like I was able to use a lot of my strengths from gymnastics in the event, which I really liked. Yeah, yeah. And one more thing about today, I mean, when you, I don't know what your expectations were coming here, but when you were sitting down and seeing this long line of people that just kept going and going, I wanted to talk with you and get your autograph. How, how cool was that for you? It's amazing. It's just, um, you know, that's one of my biggest goals with where I'm at now is to give back to the youth and inspire them. Because I know whenever I was in fifth grade, I had the same fifth grade teacher that Taryn Humphrey, who was an Olympic gymnast, had. Okay. And my teacher got me her autograph and it was, you know, signed to me. And that was so inspirational to me. So if I can do that for somebody else, um, that just means the world to me. Because okay. it's just so fun to see the kids out here enjoying the sport. Well, thank you so much. I know you guys got to get going soon, but we really appreciate having you here. Oh, thank you. It was so fun to be here.